start, bench, or cut? Kevin Durant, Giannis, or Kawhi? Who are you starting? Who are you cutting? We're not calling anyone. Who are you is, benching? This is man to man. Us three right here, right? Yeah, it's us. Yeah, this is only okay. us three. Uh, me and you, I already know what we're doing. So this is really just... You're cutting Giannis too? I'm starting KD. Yep. I'm, I'm benching Kawhi yes. and I'm cutting Giannis. I think the start is obvious. You want to know why? <laughs> the reason I'm doing it is because not only did Kawhi <laughs> beat Giannis head to head and come back from 0-2 to beat him in the ECF, then win the NBA Finals, oh. Kawhi had one of the greatest playoff runs in the last decade. Probably it's up there. Giannis had a great playoff run. Don't get me wrong. But who did Giannis play? Mm. A Miami team that had no offense, that honestly he averaged 22 in. He didn't even have his best series in that. Then you played the Hobble Nets, and you only played Kevin Durant, basically. Let's not belittle that. Still beat the Nets. With Let's that, not with, belittle Without Harden it. and Kyrie, it's it's not that big of an accomplishment, I'm going to be honest. And then I'm screaming. And then in the Game ECF. Game three, didn't Kyrie play? Yeah, it was 2-1. And then in the ECF, you face Atlanta. Like, Atlanta's not... Like Atlanta's not scaring anybody. They beat the number one seeded Philly, even though they... And then in the finals, Mom. yes, they beat Phoenix. And I, I think Phoenix was a very good team. But... The knock on Phoenix the entire playoffs was, oh, they're a fluke. They don't face any good teams. All the teams they've beat were injured. Uh-huh. Whereas Kawhi, when he went on his playoff run, he beat Philly, took them to seven, hit the game winner on them. Wasn't then, that a miracle of God? But he was then, all going crazy. He was. It was a miracle of God. Then after being down 0-2, they stick Kawhi on Giannis, and they, they win four games in a row and beat the Bucs. Mm-hmm. Then in the finals, they beat Golden State. And I understand Golden State was hobbled, but that was the only time where he he beat an injured team. You know, the Bucs, first round, not competitive. Second round, beating the Nets were an accomplishment. But then in the ECF, beating Atlanta when they didn't have Trey Young, honestly. Trey Young got a bone bruise. It's not impressive. And Kawhi has two defensive players of the years. He has two finals MVP and two final two championships. Mm-hmm. You know, he won one with the Spurs. Mm-hmm. Then he went to Toronto who's never won a championship in its history, and won there. KD, obviously, we That's don't the agree start. But I, this is where I, you know, I can say all everything he said because everything he said was a fact. Kawhi is just a better playoff performer okay. than Giannis. All right, all but right. in terms of this year, you know, and this is where I get to the why playoffs matter more because players like this, the top five guys, mm-hmm, the top mm-hmm. six guys, sure, is sure. where they separate themselves, the, I agree. the playoffs. This year alone, on top of the Toronto run, on top of the ring with San Antonio, Kawhi was on a pace of averaging 30-plus points per game and shooting a 60% from the field. The only person that was doing that was Shaq. He was Dallas, memorable performance. Game six on the road, dropping 40, saving them. Game seven, didn't go into Utah, down 0-2. Th- back-to-back 30-point games to, to tie, the game, tie the series. I think his run you know, against Dallas – against Utah, him getting hurt obviously put Giannis in a different category because we might have seen the Clippers versus the Bucks, Giannis versus Kawhi round two. Obviously, we might have seen that. But I think if you look at it from a playoffs perspective, because regular season Giannis obviously is more dominant. Mm -hmm. Kawhi takes games off. Mm -hmm. Kawhi is still a very elite player in the regular season. Of course. But you look at it from the playoffs, Kawhi has been wherever he goes, he wins. He's one of the most – Has he? He's one of one. He's percentage wise one of the most winningest players in NBA <clears throat> history. Wherever he goes, when he's clutch, he can shoot. He when he locks in on your best player, they become non-existent, damn near. He puts pressure on a lot of players, and I think Giannis. The thing that's been holding him back is that lack of jump shot. Even then, you can game plan against Giannis. There's been times where teams have game planned against Giannis that have not stopped him, but have minimized him to the point where. All right, he's not going to do what he's done. With Kawhi, you can't really game plan against him. There's not a game plan for Kawhi. You just hope for the best and hope he misses. So it's like to say, like Joel said, this run, playing the Nets hurt. He was down 0-2, 2-1. Even the, we can say Kyrie played, but Harden didn't play. So they're still right. hurt. Kyrie goes down. He still lost game five. Wait, question. Harden played the last two games, correct? Yes. Okay, I'm just asking. But he was hurt. Hamstring. He was. I'm just asking. He played. He was hurt. In game uh-huh. five, even still, when he, Harden You're did right. play. You're right. You're right. Bucks You're lost. Right. Yes. Bucks were healthy. Bucks have been the healthiest. I agree. KD went to a different planet, but go ahead. Against Atlanta. Atlanta was a sleeper team. They beat Philly, yes, but we knew they weren't going to beat the Bucks, no matter how. We knew that. And against Phoenix, 
Phoenix was a good team, but like he said, the narrative was Phoenix hasn't played a healthy team all year. I think people just starting to push the Giannis MVP. Giannis is the top two, three player when people forget that Kawhi is still the best when he wants to be the best two-way player in the NBA. First thing I'll start with is it's definitely a competition between the two. So me taking Giannis over Kawhi, it's not like I'm saying he's leaps and bounds better than Kawhi because Kawhi is a modern-day Michael Jordan in the sense of how they play similarly. Both are great two-way players and both have similar ways of scoring. So that's what comes to mind when I think about Kawhi. But in terms of Giannis Antetokounmpo, you, you, you both said something that stuck out to me. You said that the Suns kind of were a fluke, but regardless of that, you still had them winning in five. I never said that. No, I'm not saying you did. Oh, okay. I'm not saying you did at all. What you said about, about the playoff runs is interesting because I think about how people had questioned already Giannis's ability to be successful in the playoffs, mm-hmm. and which is fine because obviously you look at previous times, you know, he's definitely had some, some moments where he wasn't the Giannis that we're used to. But Chris Middleton was never the Chris Middleton we saw until this postseason. We saw a glimpse of it in the bubble against the Heat when Giannis went down. He won that game for, for Milwaukee. Another series he baited up. He was heavy favorite. For too. sure. And oh, oh, you're saying Giannis. Yes. Yes, for sure. But you said that Kawhi's been the most winning player ever. Percentage wise. Obviously, when he starts his career with Tim Duncan, Tony Parker, Mono Ginobili, like that was already an amazing team. And you add him to that mix. Without him, they're still a winning team. He obviously helped. Kawhi Leonard was great, but he won finals MVP averaging 14 points per game. But it was the continued winning after No, I he think left. it was 17. It was well, I'm looking at here. He averaged 14 points per game in this in this playoff run. If you oh, could no, no, you look at no, the run. I'm talking, I'm talking about the finals. Look, if he I, I'm almost positive it was around, but you could look it, it up like for me. 17. You, but I'm saying and even when they Tim Duncan was he left, he, left he was Kawhi still winning. took that step. I'm not, I'm not saying you're wrong there cuz for sure he went left to the WCF. Were, he he went to the WCF, but it's not he goes to Toronto. The personnel that they had were built. The to Bucks st- were favorites, though. They were favorites, but just look at the personnel wise. Now, Great obviously, team. hindsight is twenty twenty. So, but you look at the personnel. No other team has had an answer for Giannis the way that uh, the Raptors have. Miami. Yes, and, yes, and no. The one thing I will say is it started off. Miami had their number, sure, but then Giannis ended up getting banged up around game game three, game four. He didn't go into the series hurt, but he got banged up. So really. Miami had them from the, from jump. So what did they do the next season? Handle them. Yep. Absolutely handle them. We can't gloss over that because Miami didn't have offense. That you. was a challenge of theirs. He handled them. So if you if we're going in terms of skill too, Giannis is the most dominant player we've seen other than obviously LeBron since Shaq. As a big man, we haven't seen a player dominate the way that that Giannis has since Shaquille O'Neal. And defense wise. Is, is it far-fetched to say he's top two defenders in the league, top three defenders in the league? Who are you talking about? Giannis. You can make a strong you can, debate. So, on top of, around, of, yeah, being, of, on top of being able to average 30 points a night, he's available every night. Mm. Kawhi, it's tough to say that you would bench him, and, you know, obviously in this term, bench is a good thing, over Giannis, given the fact that Kawhi is hurt right now. And you want to t- if we're taking that into account, obviously he's not going to be playing, but availability is a big role in this. And I know Giannis on both sides, night in, night out, is going to give me 100%. Kawhi's not going to do that for me. And so, again, like I stated, it's close. I'm not, I'm not going to be ignorant. It's close. But I'm taking Giannis as he, he is a legitimate contender for being the best defender in the league outside of Gobert because Gobert's numbers are just insane. And he's an amazing... Amazing score in the ba- around the basket, and he's only going to improve his jump shot. And he's a champion. This debate is really about whose run was better, Kawhi's in twenty nineteen or Giannis's run this past season, this past playoff, this past postseason. It's like you, you, you have to. Yes, you have to. Seven yeah. run in the last twenty but the years. The thing is, where, where I have difficulty giving it to him is that in the in the finals he wait, did wait. not, so, which would so have been the, the case. T- why would you give it to Giannis if he? Played. I'm not saying I'm giving it to oh, Giannis okay. clean. I, I'm giving it to Kawhi. Because it's, it's perfect, no. too, because they're both in the East. Agreed. So we could just speak on Agreed. their East run. No, I agree. Their East run, no, Kawhi, I, completely. I, I agree wholeheartedly with that sentiment. But regardless of that, the hardest task, which should have been the Golden State Warriors, ended up being their easiest matchup Same of with the, the Bucks. playoffs. The hardest task, which should have been the Nets, 
got hurt the same way the Warriors. Fair enough, did. but Steve, people Which, still had Milwaukee losing the finals. And people, people were still high on Golden State winning that. But without yeah, Kate, that's but, true. But once Clay went down, what really could you have done? But why do people say that when Clay was there, they were they were still had a losing record? Yes, though. but that game six, Clay was going crazy. That's fair. But you really he went out. Fair, the momentum fair, completely changed. That's fair. That's fair to say. So it's it's obviously I'm giving Kawhi the the edge over which playoff run was better, but in your opinion, who is who will give you 35 easier, Giannis or Kawhi? In the playoffs, Kawhi. In, in, Mm, that's tough. That's crazy that you guys say that that fast too. Because we just saw him drop an fifty in the finals. Kawhi's in the, the finals in the game clinching game. He dropped fifty. We can't say Kawhi nah, like Kawhi that. Kawhi, scores. Kawhi is one of the best scores of all time. Oh yeah, that's bold. He is. Oh wow. I'm not with that. I would even say, bro. It that, took him how long on, to I wanna hear? I, wanna hear. I would yeah. even say. You guys know James Harden is my favorite player. Yeah, that's why I'm interested. Kawhi is a better scorer than James Harden all time. And I know people are going to say, oh, you're dumb. That's a I bad take. Harden's way better. In the regular season, Harden's numbers are outstanding. We know that. He's averaged 35 multiple times. Kawhi, in the regular season, yeah, he averages good points, 27. He's efficient, too. But then in the playoffs, Kawhi goes from 26, 27 to 30 32. Mm. James Harden has averaged 35 points per game in a regular season twice. He's only averaged that once in a playoff series, never in a playoff run. Kawhi Leonard scores better in the postseason than James Harden. He's more efficient. He's damn near 50 40 90 in the playoffs when he when he enters the playoffs. And when we talk about superstar players. The postseason means much more than a regular Absolutely. season because a team is game planning for your play style for seven games. And when teams game plan around James Harden, he's neutralized. When they try to game plan against Kawhi, Kawhi puts up all-time great performances. If you look at Kawhi's playoff numbers and James Harden's playoff numbers, Kawhi beats him and is far more efficient. But you're calling Kawhi one of the greatest scorers of all time. He is. On a four-year stretch of him being this all-time, like, this great score. And and even still, his high, in the, in the run, he averaged 30.5 points per game. Giannis, this series, this postseason run, averaged 30.2. What's the efficiency? Giannis probably was more efficient because he's not taking jumpers. But field goal percentage, Giannis was shooting 57. What was Kawhi shooting? 50? I mean, look at this. Look at this. The... The year that forty nine fifty basically the year that forty nine that's incredible six, with jump shots too. sixteen seventeen the year that Golden State went seventy three and nine I mean no the year that Golden State got KD mm-hmm. Kawhi in that playoffs before getting hurt the entire playoff run he averaged twenty eight eight rebounds five assists shot fifty three percent from the field forty six percent from three Show. and ninety three percent from the free throw he's line he's different the very it's next amazing. year goes to Toronto averages thirty nine rebounds four assists shoots. 49%, 38% from three, 88% from the free throw line. Then with L.A., the Clippers, in 1920 in the bubble, averages 28, shoots 49%, 33% from three, not that great. Then 86% from the line. Then this past, then this past playoffs, he's averaging 30, shooting 57% from the field, 39% from three, but you're and 88% from the free throw line. My issue is, listen, I'm not, I'm not trying to take away any credit from what he's done. My thing is you're saying he's the best, one of the best scorers of all time. Do you, do you think James Harden is one of the best scorers of all time? I mean, you have to say he's one of the he best is, scorers and of all time. Kawhi is a better scorer than but, James Harden. So, but like KD, obviously, Michael, obviously. James Harden has never shot above. Okay, I'm not arguing James. I know, but I'm saying James Harden has never shot above 50% in the playoffs. Yeah, because that's he's known to drop off come playoff time. We've been since, trying to tell you this. since getting, no, he's still good in the playoffs. He's he just takes not. takes a drop off, which is what I. We, no, you you act like he's horrible in the I'm playoffs. I'm not saying that. Yeah, just that's say he what takes you, a drop you off. said that multiple times. <laughs> I never said James Harden doesn't drop off. Is he off. on clutch? No, he's What type he, of word is that? Is he no, not he's clutch? good. Unclutch is a word, dude. Is it really? James yes. Harden. Sure. James Harden has averaged thirty-two in the playoffs, twenty-nine. I mean, look, since since twenty sixteen, since sixteen seventeen, he's averaged twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty-two, and thirty in the playoffs. I mean, James Harden is still phenomenal. He's just not thirty-five in the regular season phenomenal. That's really you know where things get you know kind of watery. But James Harden is not more efficient from three than Kawhi. 
or from the free throw line or from the field mm-hmm. in just the playoffs. Efficient. I'm not I'm not arguing that. And Ka- and that's the thing, and that's why I think Kawhi Leonard is is the better scorer than James Harden when it comes to the postseason. And I think in terms of ranking these players, we have to rank them in terms of postseason success because if Kawhi was on a team like Houston or was on a team where everybody around him is not that good and he has to drop 35 a game, he can do it. He just hasn't been on that. He just hasn't been in that position. So in terms of Kawhi versus Giannis as a scorer, that's why I give the I give the edge to Kawhi by far. 